What's up Raider Nation? So I'm back here with another video. I have to be really quiet because um, I, I have family downstairs and I'm, I'm upstairs here in my room. So I came and hid. Um, but I gotta be really quiet. But, uh, hi, welcome to another video. Um, let me just say this real quick, alright? I didn't want to make this video. Like, I wasn't even planning to make a video today. But of course the Raiders organization waits until the day after I do my show, my weekly show, to set off all the fireworks when it comes to the news. Like, of course they wait a day. Can't, couldn't they wait another? Or couldn't I wait another? I don't know. <laughs> um, but I'm making this video because this story right here where about Richie Incognito kind of mess, mess with me. Uh, otherwise, I don't think I would have made this video. So let's get right into the news. There's three big new, four big news uh, stories today. So we're going to talk about, we're going to go from first to worst. So... Let's talk about Richie Incognito. Richie Incognito reportedly works out for Raiders once we return to the NFL after sitting out 2018 season. After unretiring, unretiring, getting cut by Bills, and... Um, Mike Gil Garofolo tweeted, Here's an interesting one. The Raiders are working out free agent guard Richie Incognito today. Sources to say... Uh, incognito didn't play last year after he was retired and retired was cut by bills where is it where is it that he is in shape and feeling well in all aspects wants to play again 35 okay i got a lot of issues with this i got a lot of issues with this why well let's talk about richie incognito's history when it comes into legal troubles like this is disgusting like, what is John Gruden doing? This is this disgusts me. This is one of the most disgusting moves we've made since the Mac, the Cleo Mac deal. Honestly. This is, I mean, we haven't signed him. But this is so disgusting to even bring him into our building and our vibes. And why I say our vibes is, well, because the Raiders want to build something healthy. They want to build something where all the whole team's together. They want to build something that, you know, where real men are out there playing for a playoff spot. But they're out here bringing in Richie Incognito, who has a lot of criminal history. Just for starters, 2013, Jonathan Martin, jo the Jonathan Martin incident. He was he was bullying Jonathan uh, Martin, who was on, they were both on the Dolphins at that time. This was his second year in the league. Um, but him and Jonathan Martin uh, started an, an altercation after Incognito, uh, after. Martin didn't pay Incognito money for allowing him to use it for some party. And it got to the point where he started calling... Him and, him and another teammate started calling Jonathan Martin names. And um, they threatened him, his family. They even called him with a, a threat phone call, threat voicemail, saying that they slept with his girlfriend. So, um, for one... Who wants those vibes on the Raiders? We've had way too many of those vibes throughout the past few years. Uh, for instance, we dealt with the Michael Crabtree vibes. For instance, we dealt with the Bruce Irvin vibes. For instance, we dealt with um, the Amari Cooper vibes, although I don't think there were any. For instance, we definitely dealt with the Donald Penn crap. For even worse, it says Marquette King. And yes, I'm, tri I'm triggered to a T. How are you going to say you want to build something, you know, something fair, something, you know, better, something, um, something healthy, when you're going to bring in Richie Incognito, who on top of all that situation that it just announced, this was, this one was the worst one. His father, his father passed away last year. Obviously, when somebody dies in your family, you go to a funeral to pay your respects. Okay, so Richie Incognito, whether he has ADHD or not, as it's been rumored, or uh, bipolar disorder, depression, whatever the crap that is, um, whatever the crap it may be, <sighs> Richie Incognito went to the, his father's funeral and got into a fight with somebody who was there disrespecting his father's work in life, and he decided, Richie Incognito decided to take it upon himself to go get a gun out of his car and start threatening to shoot people in at the funeral because somebody wanted to touch his father's remains they cremated him are you really going to go and, try and attempt to shoot somebody at such a mute a moot point in your life such a moot celebration such a i don't know remorseful 
dark celebration. So anyways, he ended up getting arrested and ended up in the standing asylum. That's the type of player that the Raiders want to bring in. And I know that he's, he's a solid player. Like, he's got good skills. He's definitely better than what we have. But, like, this is disgusting. This is ch- chilly disgusting. I'm disgusted by this. And John Gruden, how dare you? How dare you do that? How dare you? I'm going to be triggered if you sign him. At that price, I would have kept Kalecho Assembly. We don't need that kind of drama back in the locker room. We saw it in 2018, especially 20, 2017. 2017, it all fell apart, thanks to Jack Del Taco. But, like, oh, my God. This is the worst thing the Raiders could do. I'm, I'm disgusted. And then they say that... Um, and then they say that they have, they both have mutual interest and a deal can get done by tomorrow or even tonight. Mm. Like what the, uh? you don't bring in this, that type of person. Like that's disgusting. Plus the NFL has not only fined him, but suspended him. And they got into the situation where he was threatening Jonathan Martin back in 2013. Like really? It's it's gonna be just like that the what's his name uh that center that the Raiders had playing in the Super Bowl in two thousand two, and then he went AWOL after partying in San Diego, right? Wasn't that the story? God, I can't remember his name. I know his, no, I think it was uh, Barrett Robbins. Yeah, Barrett Robbins, the center back in two thousand two. That's gonna be the same exact situation we're gonna have now. Like, bro, Ur Gruden, Ur, disgusting. Like, could you imagine how many heads that's going to turn? Could you imagine that, like, that's going to, that's a, uh, he could get into a fight with Derek Carr for all we know, and that'll be it. And now Derek Carr doesn't have Donald, uh, Donald Penn to stand up for anymore, or Lee Smith. So, anyway, I hope that doesn't happen, but I'm just telling you guys this story. Next story, um, as you guys can see here, the Raiders traded Eddie Pinero. Now, shout out to the guy who was watching my stream yesterday by the name of, I think it, I, I remember his name started with E-S. I don't remember the other part of his name. Um, but shout out to you. You know who you are if you're watching this video. Um, E-S, as we're going to call him, said yesterday in my live stream that he did not want Eddie Pinero to be cut. He thought the Raiders needed Eddie Pinero, and he thought he should they, they should have started him over Daniel Carlson. At the time when the Raiders brought him in, I was hyped. Because this kid, man, can be, like I said, not only better... But even, like, not only better, but just as good as Daniel Carlson can be. Or will be. Um, anyways, and I also said at one point that he wasn't given a fair chance due to the fact that Carlson took over right after he, uh, Pinell injured his groin. Like, so, I, you know, I, I said that I didn't think that... I didn't think that Eddie Pinero had a fighting chance due to the circumstances with, with the kicker situation. I mean, it was it was already determined that Daniel Carlson was going to be the man, regardless regardless of what happened with Eddie Pinero or even Drew Kaiser, if that's what you want to call it. Um, but the Raiders traded him. The Raiders did trade him. They traded him. Oh yeah, uh, Bears fans and Bears organization, dear Chicago Bears, dear Chicago Bears front office. We would appreciate as Raider fans if you guys gave the Raiders a a gift of appreciation for the last few months. We would appreciate if you guys would spoil us at least one time. And why I say that is, well, because they've done so many deals with the Bears and given the Bears so many treats. A la Cleo Mack, uh, Eddie Pinero, uh, yeah. But the Raiders traded Eddie Pinero for a conditional 7th round pick. Now, for those that don't know who a con- uh, con- what a conditional seventh round pick is, uh, it's basically where like the teams think of a of a situation where if the player is on a roster for a certain amount of time, that pick will be sent to the team that traded for the uh, player. So pretty much, if Eddie Pinero is on the on the Bears roster uh, in the first five weeks of the regular season, the Raiders will get that seventh round pick. If not, then that seventh round pick will not go to anybody. So pretty much, the Bears got him for nothing. But as for the Bears, I know the Bears have 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 had, have had some kicking woes, and they cut all these kickers that they tried out because they weren't good enough. Um. So Bears fans, listen. 
Raiders didn't get to experience the 80-point Network experience. Let me tell you one thing, though. This kid is the best Florida uh, kicker in Florida in Flor- Florida Gators history. He is your answer to the kicker position. He is your Cody Parkey. No, no. He is your um. He is your Robbie Gold replacement. He is the player who's way better than both those kickers combined. He has a 96 completion percentage. Bears fans, you guys got a good one. Use him wisely, Bears. That's a, that was a great steal for the Bears. He's so solid. That will fix your kicking woes, no doubt. And I look forward to seeing him in Week 5, possibly, kicking balls for the um, Bears. Um, he ended up... Um, what's it called? He ended up... Uh, he ended up... Um, kicking an 81-yarder in practice one time at Florida. So... Wow. Yeah, Pinero is definitely the kicker of the future. They, once it, once Matt Nagy and once that special teams coordinator see Eddie Pinero with their own eyes, they will be wowed. They will fall in love because he's, so, he's, he's really, really solid. So Bears fans, you guys got a good one. As for that seventh round pick, I don't care if we get it or not. <laughs> um, meanwhile, did you guys realize that, uh, that, um, hold on, let me, let me get this first. Did you guys realize that, uh, did you guys realize that Colton Miller switches number? Hold on, guys, I got, give me a minute. I gotta check a text message from my mom. Give me one second. Give me one second. My mom, my mom is texting me. Uh... Alright guys, so, okay, going back to the video, did anybody realize that Colton Miller did something? Did, did anybody realize that, um, let me see, where, where's Colton Miller at? Jesus Christ, I already skipped him, didn't I? Did anybody realize that Colton Miller switched his number? Did anyone realize that Colton Miller went from 77 to number 74? I didn't even know that until Victor Fur tweeted it out that Trent Brown and Colton Miller switched numbers. Trent Brown gets 77, and Colton Miller is now gonna go from 77 to number 74. Did anybody realize that? Did anybody realize that Colton Miller switches number? Man, that was a sneaky good change. I didn't even realize that Colton Miller uh, changed his number from number 77 to number 74. But there's something for y'all, Raider Nation. I didn't even realize it until now. Um. I think that he wore number 74 at one point in college, I remember. I, I think, if I can recall. But I think number 74 is going to look really good on Colton Miller. I think number 74 is going to look way better on Colton Miller than number 77. I don't know, something about it. Yeah, but I didn't even realize that. So, yeah. Um, But Raider Nation, that's pretty much all I got for y'all today. I just wanted to come on here and rant about Richie Incognito. Hopefully you guys understand the point. The point is that the Raiders don't need to have him. Because he was that he, he at one point went to his father's funeral and tried to shoot somebody who touched his father's remains. So, uh, Ronald Ollie, star from Land Chance, you also signed with the Raiders. So, there's something for you. So, so yeah, yeah, this is me too. <laughs> um, yeah, Raider Nation, I'll see you guys later. And as always, go 